Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to my impressions video for the ZMF Atrium. So as usual, I'm going to talk about the Atrium's looks, its uh, comfort, build quality, etc. And then move on to discussion of its sound. I'll talk about how its tonal performance uh, affairs compared to other headphones and also its technical performance vis-a-vis -vis, you know, detail retrieval, speed, slam, staging, imaging, and timbre. And finally, I'll you know, give my concluding thoughts on it. So the ZMF Atrium is Zach and Bevan's latest flagship, and um, it has been greeted with a lot of uh, you know excitement from the industry, and rightly so. Uh, uh, they have done interesting things with this uh, headphone. So their drivers in this headphone are positioned slightly to the back, which basically has given them more space, uh, with which to then recreate a perception of stage, more depth and more width. And um, but the important thing is that I think a lot of reviewers have missed is that I think this has also given the atrium more slam and and a lot more body and physicality so overall I think this driver setup that Zach has come up with is working well for the atrium and yeah so construction wise it's phenomenal ZMF headphones are always constructed to last a lifetime that heirloom looking heirloom quality aesthetics and build of course and so this cable that I'm using with it is from Trevor of Norn Audio. It's supposed to be an aesthetic match, and it is. It's a Vigard, a silver boosted copper, but more on that later. I'm just going to remove the cable so that uh, um, it's less cumbersome for me to move around this headphone. So yeah, so comfort strap. This headphone is slightly clampier than I think other, especially the Verite Close that I have here. The Verite Close is also lighter. Uh, it's slightly clampier. It's not extremely clampy, and I do have a large head, so the way it looks is is like this so it's not super clampy at all but it does clamp right and then um, the very day clothes that you see over here is is just built differently I think so it's lighter and, and you know it, it clamps slightly less I think um, you obviously get your choice of ear pads and I, I and I got myself um, some suede pads the universe lambskin and the tour lambskin I think um, yeah and aesthetically this is magnificent this is a Koa limited edition wood uh, so if you see that if I hold up the headphone up higher, it just becomes slightly more yellowish as opposed to if I hold it here It might look slightly more brownish and that's because this shade of wood is um, Is interesting. It's as so Zach finished this himself I don't know if I mentioned it Zach did was kind enough to you know work on it himself and you know add finishing touches etc so the effect is this amazing luminescence that is not bright but like, like I was saying, in yellow light, this wood is slightly more yellowish, but in white light, it's slightly more brownish. And I love this, this quality of this wood, of this koa. It feels very solid and this very intricate and very awesome and eye-catching uh, design work here. So this is a silver grill, but the silver is such that, again, in light and possibly because of the surrounding shade of the wood, it can sometimes look like it's chrome, uh, which works really well. And so I'm in love with this aesthetic. I do want to at some point experiment or get into more exotic woods and exotic colors, etc. I'm not averse to exotic colors. I do like Zach's usual wood and silver aesthetic. But yeah, I mean, all in all, this is an amazing looking headphone, amazing feeling headphone. DMF gives you lifetime warranty on drivers. You definitely get your value for money there. Premium materials. I mean, this is the sort of headphone that if you have a friend coming in who's not an audiophile and you want to show what your hobby is about, this is what you show to the person. Um, yeah, so this is phenomenal, stunning, great job Zach and Bevan with the design aesthetics, build and comfort, everything honestly. Tonally, so in a strange way, I think tonally this is perhaps my favorite ZMF headphone. And I, I do think it sort of, it just beats the VC for my preferences in terms of tonality. I, I perceive that, like, so a lot of other reviewers, like, DMS, for example, I think DMS really nails it when he said this is like this is tuned like a 6XX and it is It's very much like a 6XX with more bass energy and with more slam and more physicality So you can't go wrong with this headphone in terms of tonality honestly because I mean who doesn't like the 6XX? There are people I think who you know who maybe liked the 6XX but then graduated to more resolving analytical headphones and then started not liking the 6XX but if, even if you're from that camp this is, of course, more resolving and more technically proficient than a 6XX. 
but the technical performance you get from this headphone will depend a lot on the kind of amplifier you're using, which I'll talk about. In any case, tonally, the bass is wonderful. I, I do think this is my favorite bass on a ZMF headphone. So the Verite Close, for instance, gives me good bass. It's a pretty uh, you know, linear bass, with slightly more emphasis on a mid bass than sub bass. That's true also here. The ZMF Atrium also has good bass impact. And, and over, the ZMF uh, Verite Close also, also has good bass impact. I do think this has slightly more bass impact, especially when driven off the right tubes. I use an OTL, a Felix, Felix Euphoria Anniversary Edition, and it does bring out its bass wonderfully. So, but I do sense that there's slightly more mid bass here than sub bass, so it's very punchy. Uh, you do feel the thickness of the sub bass, the growl of the sub bass, the kick of the sub bass, um, when the song calls for it, but it's not very sub bass heavy, like a lot of headphones can be. I was just thinking of the IM that I used to like, uh, the T-Audio Monarch Mark One. I. I still like the IM, but I sold it because I then, you know, since graduated to the e Legend Evos, or even the Legend Evos, the IM, has a, has a dominance around the sub-bass area, so this doesn't, but this is not by any means sub-bass light. And I've seen people say that this is more mid-bassy, and some people have even said it's sub-bass light. I don't think that's the case at all. I do think that once you drive this a solid state, you do get a different sound and that the mid bass is perhaps more accentuated at the expense of sub bass. But if you're driving it off the right OTL and not even a, you know, other tube amps, I really think an OTL is basically what you need to bring out the magic of these 300 ohm headphones. Yeah, I mean, you get bass all day. Very nice bass here. The warm bass, uh, the mid bass does not sort of bleed into the mid range and it's just well done bass. And the best part about the tonality is that it's very it's very it's very the note weight is very present so in that it reminds me of the utopia it's a very very um, heavy note weight sort of a headphone so it's very physical and i think that's what the atrium damping system has been able to achieve mid-range of course i mean you can't go wrong with the zmf mid-range zach nails it here there's pin again so but it's not as much as harman so voices are not as shouty as they think harman tends to be so Harman is not often associated with being shouty, but I can find Harman shouty and even thin, honestly, because Harman was never meant to be uh, the graph for everyone, right? Because Har the Harman target is based on an, a sampling of, av of, of consumer taste. So in a certain sense, in a, very, in a crude way of sort of discussing Harman would be to say that it's an average of consumer tastes. But even then, you could nitpick and talk about the sampling side that was used in the Harman study, etc., and whether the confidence interval was appropriate or whether the error margin was appropriate. So without getting into statistics, which I've studied and I enjoy, I think what has to be said is that the Harman target was not meant to be a new, was not meant to be treated as a gold standard for a neutral. So this is not this is close in a certain way to Harman, but this is not exactly Harman tuned. Its upper mids are not where Harman suggests your upper mids should be. But it's not like it's recessed like the LCD4. I actually prefer the upper mids here than on the Harman because it's not as forward, so it's not as shouty. Uh, but it's the vocals have presence, guitars have presence, and it works really well. It works well with all genres, by the way. I like rock and metal, and I also like vocal bass tracks, and this has done well with all genres that I've tried. Treble is very nice. It's very 6XX like treble, so it's not sharp at all. It's If anything, some might find the treble slightly warm. Uh, there's air. Uh, there's a good amount of definition and there's great clarity as well. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if you're a treble head, you're probably not looking at this headphone. Overall, I would say this is warm of neutral, uh, ZMF neutral perhaps, and I think um, tonality wise, it nails it. It works well with every genre. You're not going to switch tracks on this headphone. So, tonality wise, kudos. It's one of my favorite headphones, and I might at some point do a ranking for tonality, and I honestly think that this would be in the top three. Now, moving on to technical performance. So there is a perception among, so there are two kinds of people I meet with regard to ZMF, right? Um, maybe three. So the first type are people who are ZMF aficionados and they own a lot of ZMF headphones. They love ZMF headphones. And these are people who pay, you know, drop like large sums of money to own like limited edition headphones. And you know, they love the headphone for its sturdiness, its durability, its sound, its aesthetics, its comfort, everything, right? And, uh, and then there are people who I think also love the MF headphones, but these are people who are tokening more for the absolute last bit of technical performance. Like, so they are they, they basically are spitting with a RAL SR1A or with the Susvara that I have over there or with an Abyss. 
AB 1266 phi TC. So the second group of people are people who will often equate technical performance with listening pleasure because for them these wow moments of getting the last bit of detail is important. So from the second camp, I've often perceived that people say that ZMF headphones are not as resolving as let's say a Utopia or, or a Sosvara or especially the plain art because I, I do think this comes very close to the Utopia. Uh, so now where I stand in this sort of distinction is that or vis-a-vis -vis this sort of, sort of distinction is that I think that people really ought to be trying ZMF headphones off OTLs uh, like a Felix Euphoria or a DIY OTL that you know uh, uh, or, or any OTL on it, honestly because OTLs have higher output impedance and because of the impedance matching and I'll drop a link to some of this and I've also talked to Zach about this and a few other tube manufacturers about this because what happens when the impedance is rightly cor correctly matched with this or even a 6xx that an OTL affords is that you do get a shift in performance and, a sh and you do get the right sort of voltage to get these headphones to their maximum performance because if you drive this of a THX amp or even other solid state amps I've often felt that these don't perform to the same level as they do on an OTL so on my OTL I do sense more clarity a bigger sound more slam and so if I had to then now move into specifics about its technical performance it's not even when driven to its fullest potential which I think I am driving which which I think I'm doing I have a whole audio made act with the Felix Euphoria and I do think that chain is enough to drive this to its maximum potential I think that this even though in digital retrieval it might not be at the level of a Susvara and I don't think it is but it's just one notch below so this trades blows with the Utopia I think and I do and I do give it to the Utopia slightly for digital retrieval but when it comes to other aspects of its technical performance like let's say for a stage it beats the Utopia handily I think it matches the Utopia for stage depth which is saying a lot because Utopia is phenomenal for stage depth what this atrium damping system has allowed this headphone to do is match a, a headphone like Utopia for stage depth and layering which is an astounding achievement its width surpasses that of the Utopia it's not H800S wide but I would say it's almost as wide as the Susvara again the Susvara is not the widest headphone the TC that I have is a wider headphone but this is wide this is plenty wide slam beats the Susvara easily it's a very slammy punchy headphone off solid state it's still punchy but off a OTL it's punchier punchier and just just very physical and just amazing timbre no holds I mean it wins it beats all headphones easily other than its family members like the very day clothes etc the biocellulose timbre is just phenomenal it sounds very natural so yeah I do think it beats every other headphone for timbre with the exception of a Verite Closed or a Verite or a 6XX. So technically, the way I would rank it is, although it's not as detailed perhaps as a Susvara or a TC, it's just one notch below a Susvara TC or an LCD5 when driven right. And, and it's plenty, plenty, plenty technical. And what it lacks perhaps in detail relative to a Susvara, mind you, I'm comparing this with a Susvara, which is th twice as expensive. Um, what it lacks in terms of resolution compared to Susvara, it more than makes up in terms of body, in terms of slam, in terms of timbre. So overall, technically, I wouldn't say that this is less technical taking into account all these parameters compared to Susvara. I would, however, say that I, like other audiophiles, do place a slightly higher premium on resolution, on the information I get from tracks in which Susvara does beat the atrium. So I'm not saying this is the same level of Susvara overall I do think the Susvara is still a superior headphone as is the TC but I think this is the next level guys this is definitely the next level and at $2,800 which is what I bought this for I think it's honestly good value especially if you consider the aesthetics the build the looks and yeah it's an expensive hobby and you know headphones shouldn't cost as more than maybe $500 but if you're if you're not in that sort of mind space if you're not you know, if you're not beholden to that sort of value paradigm, if you look at the overall market for headphones, I think this is a fairly priced headphone and perhaps a well-priced headphone. Yeah, so that's where I stand with regard to second performance. Tambor, I've already talked about comparisons. So who's this for and, you know, what sort of music can you play this with, etc. This, I think, is for everyone. In a certain sense, I do think the very day closed 
appealed to a wider audience than perhaps the Verity opened it because of its closed back use case. It's the Verity closed is also slightly punctured, etc. And what the Verity closed did really well is that it was able to stand its own ground against open back headphones. And a lot of people would compare the Verity closed with open back headphones, like I have in a previous video. Because this is my Verity closed, I'm never selling it. I'm currently going through some back and neck spasm issues, which are getting better. So I've been advised by doctors to not have these headphones, heavy headphones on me, on my head for too long. But even then, you know, I'm just, you know, I just wanted to get this review out because I just think that this deserves, or, or you know, I just was excited about sharing my views on it. And a few of you have asked me to. So yeah, it's a beautiful headphone. It sounds right. It sounds very right. It's slightly warm of what I perceive neutral to be. It's perhaps how headphones should sound. And, and I really like the bass here. I can't say enough about the bass impact of these headphones. I can't say enough about the importance of driving this with an OTL. A Felix Euphoria Anniversary Edition is an expensive OTL, perhaps the best commercially produced OTL available in the market. So another thing I want to talk about, guys, is that I've driven this off a of Woo Audio Wa 33 recently uh, on my overseas trip that I just recently completed. And I think that the OTL drove it better. So the Wah 33 are these high-end tube amplifiers that are made to drive high-end, hard to drive planars like an Abyss or Susvara have their use cases because a Wah 33 can drive a TC much better. An OTL like a Felix Euphoria will not be able to drive a TC or Susvara at all. It just doesn't have the output power and it's not meant to drive a planar. But an OTL, I think, does work better with the ZMF. Uh, there is a tonality shift and I, and I think there is a certain scaling of technical performance that happens with an OTL. Yes, you can have a transformer based amp, which is not an OTL, a transformer based tube amp, which can give you different in impedance settings. But in many cases, and I've talked to a lot of tube manufacturers about this, that even when you have the, the option of switching impedance or setting impedance settings on a transformer based tube amp, I, th I think to some extent the sound does get colored by the transformers. But with an OTL or with most OTLs, you have less between the tubes and the headphone. And it's a, in a certain sense, a pure sound. You get the tube sound more. And, and tubes have higher, naturally higher impedance. So I think there's more impedance matching. And, and I do think you have a greater possibility that you'll get these high impedance drivers to sing to their maximum potential. So that's it, guys. Buy the ZMF Atrium. I strongly recommend it. I'm going to revise my rankings. And I honestly think that this has made me i've been listening to this a lot ever since i got it and i think i've listened to this much more than the utopia and um yeah i really really appreciate zach and bevan for this wonderful headphone like i said they've not i've not i have no financial incentive to say whatever i've said here this is bought with my own money completely but uh, i do want you to not miss this headphone because it's phenomenal it's totally right it's technically wonderful it looks beautiful so yeah check it out I don't think this headphone will disappoint anyone, honestly. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next one. Bye-bye.